video, we are going to solve some problems on material balances in food engineering. If you want to know about the concept of material balance in food engineering, then I made a separate video for that, a specific video for that. So you can check that out. I will leave a link down in the description. All right, so here is our question. Now, what I want you to do is to not just focus on the answer, the solution to this problem, but also the approach on how are you going to read this specific problem. Because if you read this and if you are able to understand what the examiner or the person who is asking the question is trying to ask, then you'll be able to solve the problem easily. If you read this properly, if you read this, if you interpret the data that has been given, then you will win half of the battle. Okay, so let's read this question. Determine the amount of juice concentrate. So we have to determine the amount of juice concentrate containing 65% solids. Okay, and single strain juice containing 15% solids. That must be mixed. So that means there are two components that have to be mixed. And finally, to produce 100 kgs of a concentrate, that means finally we want the yield of the product to be 100 kgs and the 100 kg of the product should contain 45% solid. Okay, so as you may have uh, observed that I read the entire question in one go, but what I would recommend you to do is to read the question bit by bit. If there are any commas or any full stops, you have to stop there. Why do I recommend to read the question slowly? Because the, this question is relatively easy and you may be tackling some complicated or complex problems which are very lengthy problems and in that case you will have to understand the question bit by bit and if you are not able to do so uh, it will be very challenging to solve it so I would recommend to read it slowly and then write the given data if the question is too lengthy all right so first of all let me draw the block diagram for the mass balance Now let us annotate the data. Now we will mention that from this side, the feed is entering into the mixer. And this feed contains 65% solids. So we will mention over here, 65% solids. 65% solids because it has been mentioned in the question. And now this has been mixed with a single strength juice containing 15% solids. So that means the second component that has been mixed is constituting of 15% solids okay let's mention the amount of uh, the second component the second juice is y you can assume any alphabet you want i'm just assuming y and finally we will derive the concentrated product which we denote by capital c and this capital c will be 100 kgs because this has been explicitly mentioned that the mixture or the two quantities must be mixed to produce 100 kg. So that's why this concentrated product will be 100 kg. And this should be containing 45% of solids. So the final product should be having 45% of solids. So now we have uh, drawn the block diagram. We have annotated all the data. We have drawn the respective arrows. Now what do we have to do? We have to write down the equation of total mass balance. Now also, uh, if you are approaching this problem step by step, you can also draw a system boundary. You can also draw a system boundary like this. Let me do it. it let me do this in a different color. So here is our system boundary. Now we will write total mass balance equation. Now as you may remember from the previous video, or if you already know the concept, the total mass balance equation is based on law of conservation of mass. Total mass balance. This is based on law of conservation of mass. That means the, that means the amount of the components entering will be equal to the amount of the product that is exiting the system. Now here, in this case, two components are entering the mixture. 
there are two components that are entering the mixture. The first component is RF, this component and the second component is Y. So we will add both of these. F plus Y is equal to, so what is the amount that is exiting? So that is 100 kgs or we can also write this as C, capital C. And then we can rewrite this as F plus Y is equal to 100. We just substituted the value of C. Let's mark this equation as first equation. Now we will write down the component balance equation for the solids. Now in this case, solid is one component and we will write the equation in terms of the solid entity or the component of solid. So how do we write that? So first of all, in the feed, the feed is denoted by capital F and the feed is 65%. The feed is containing this feed is containing 65% of solids. So if I try to convert or if I try to find out the amount of solids uh, in the feed, what I will do? We will do something like this. So 65% of solids are present in F. So F is the feed and 65% of F uh, is present in this specific feed. So I cannot use 65% directly in the equation. So I have to convert this into decimal form. You cannot use percentages directly. So 65 converting into it into the percentage, 65 divided by 100. And in place of off, we will write multiplication and F as it is. So this will give us 0.65F. Okay, so this is the amount of solid in the feed. And this is uh, entering into the system. This is entering into the mixer. So we will write this on left hand side 0.65F. And what else is entering the system? What is the inflow? So the second component that is entering the system is this Y feed, which has 15% of solids. And we will apply the same principle over here that 15% of Y will be equal to 15 divided by 100. We are again converting this into decimal form multiplied by Y, which will be given as finally 0.15 Y. Now this is the amount of single strand juice. This is the single strand juice that is entering into the mixer. And since this is, this is, and since this is inflowing, this is going inside the mixer, we will add this 0.15 Y. Now what is exiting the system? That will, that will be writing on the right hand side. So concentrated product that is 100 kgs in weight is exiting the system and that has 45% of solids. Since we are writing this component balance equation in terms of solids, so we have to find out the amount of solids that is present in 100 kgs. So how we will find that? We will simply again write this as 45% of 100. That means 45% of solids are present in 100 kgs. And we will convert this 45 divided by 100 multiplied by 100. Again, we are converting this into a simple decimal form so that we can easily use this in our equation. Now 100 will cancel out and we will be finally left with 45. And we will use this 45 in our equation. So this is our second equation. And this can also be uh, called as component balance equation. Now here in the solution you have two different equations and what I can do, I can substitute the value of y or I can substitute the value of f to find out the values of y and f step by step. So what I will do, I will use f equal to 100 minus y. So here I just isolated f in the first equation and then transferred y to the right hand side. Since I am transferring a positive sign on the right hand side, this will be converted into a negative sign. And now I will use this in my second equation. Okay, so substituting f, substituting the value of f, and f is 100 minus y, plus 0.15y 
is equal to 45. Now I am going to solve this. Now this is, uh, this is very easy mathematics, but uh, let me just solve it and show it to you how I am going to solve this. Now as you can see after solving the equation I have calculated the value of y that is 40 kgs. Now this is the value of the single strength juice. Let me scroll up and show you the value. So this is the, this is the value y that is entering into the mixer. And what do we have to find out? We have to find out the amount of juice concentrate containing 65% solids. So we have to find out this f that is containing 65% solids and how we will find out now we will use the first equation once again because now we have y and we can easily find out f so we will be using first equation again using equation first f plus y is equal to 100 so this was the first equation and now I have the value of uh, y so I will put this f plus 40 is equal to 100 and now this is too easy to solve 100 minus 40 is 60 okay so I will write this down so f is 60 kgs this is our amount of the concentrated juice that has 65 percent solids so this is the amount of concentrated juice containing 65% of solids. Alright, so I just mentioned this final statement because uh, examiners really desire this uh, statement, this final statement, so that it is absolutely clear to the examiner and to you as well that what is the desired answer and if you were able to understand or interpret the question properly. Now let us read the next question. Draw a diagram and set up equations representing total mass balance and component mass balance. So that means I will have to draw a block diagram and I will have to set up the equations, separate equations. One equation will be for total mass balance and the second equation will be for component mass balance. For a system involving the mixing of pork and the composition of pork has been given over here in the brackets 15% protein, 20% fat and 63% water. So this is the composition of protein and back fat. Now the back fat is just the fat that is present in the back of an animal. The composition of back fat is given as 15% water, 80% fat and 3% protein. To make 100 kg of mixture containing 25% fat. So that means we will have to produce a yield. The final yield should be 100 kg. And this 100 kg should contain 25% of fat. So first of all, let us draw a block diagram and then you will understand it more clearly. I am writing mixer because basically in this equation or in this operation two different components are being mixed and this is evident over here that the system involving mixing so that means two components are being mixed the first component is pork and the second component is back fat so I will also mention over here the feed or the first component that is going inside is pork that I will mark as capital P I'll just write over here that this is pork and now I will also mention the different components sub constituents that are present in this so I can mention over here 15% protein 20% fat 63% water And the second component 
or the second material that is going inside is back fat and we can show an arrow over here let me redraw this <laughs> show an arrow over here and this is back fat I can mention this as capital B for back fat and this has composition 15% water I'm just annotating the data right now so that while solving the problem it is easier for us to just get the gist of uh, the problem and solve it easily and 3% protein and now the final part of the question says that make 100 kg of mixture containing 25% of fat so that means I have to make 100 kg so the final product will have a weight of 100 kg I can call this as M because this is a mixture and this M has 100 kg of weight now another thing that has been mentioned with 100 kg of mixture is 25% of fat so this 100 kg is containing must be containing 25% of fat all right so we have uh, drawn the block diagram and we have set up the equations we can also draw the system boundaries because sometimes the examiner will expect you to draw these boundaries because it could it could be possible that the examiner deducts some marks for not drawing this system boundary because as per the rules you should draw a system boundary although you can do it without uh, making a system boundary like this but I'm just drawing it to make sure that you do not miss it uh, you do not miss out this one all right so first of all we are going to write the total mass balance equation uh, the total mass balance equation if you remember from the previous video or if you just remember if you have studied about material balance or mass balance it is based on the equation of inflow and outflow so I'm going to write this inflow is equal to outflow since in this question it is not mentioned unsteady state we are going to assume that this is a steady state all right so this is steady state and in the case of steady state inflow is out uh, is equal to outflow now in this case we have to we have to see what is going inside what is the material that is going inside so there are two materials as we have already mentioned over here the first material is pork and the second material is back fat so we are going to add these two quantities P plus B these are the materials that are going inside so the inflow will be replaced by P plus B and equal to outflow so what is going outside what is going outside 100 kg that is the mixture that is 100 kg is going outside so we will mention M over, over here first of all and then we will replace M with 100 you could have just written it directly but I am just doing it step by step so that it is easier for everyone to understand alright so this is our equation 1 we can also write this as B is equal to 100 minus P and you may be wondering why I uh, wrote this like that I'll be using this equation I'll be substituting this equation the value of B in the component mass balance equation that I'm going to write just now so the component mass balance equation now we have different components over here see we have protein we have fat we have water so if we go according to the question we will have to make three different component equation but that is not necessary in this question the person who made this question has given you these different quantities protein fat and water basically to confuse you these are just the values to confuse you because if you look at it closely in the final product the mixture should be containing 25% of fat so this is mandatory because this has been given in the question right this is mandatory but it is not mandatory the examiner or the question maker does not care about uh, the content of water they do not care about the content of water they do not care about the content of protein they just care about the content of fat let me highlight fat because the final product desires 25 percent of fat so we will have to make the component mass balance equation in terms of fat only I have to ignore the values of protein and water because 
the question maker or the process does not require you it doesn't care whether the percentage of water is 15% or protein is 10% they don't care they just care that the amount of fat should be 25% so that's why i'm going to make the equation in terms of fat now pay attention that 20% of fat if i have to convert this into decimal what i will do 20% of fat of fat and uh, so 20% is fat 20 uh, not of fat and 20% is present in p p is the total amount that is going in and 20% of p is the amount of fat so 20% of p how i am going to write this 20 divided by 100 multiplied by p so this will be given as 0.2p in the same fashion for the case of back fat we are going to calculate 80% fat and we are going to convert this into decimal form 80% of b because 80% of b because b is going inside and now if you don't remember why i am using uh, why i am uh, converting this into decimal because we cannot use percentage directly into the formula into the equation so we have to convert percentage into a decimal a simpler form so i write it like this and then this will come out as 0.8 b okay so this is the amount of fat in back fat okay and this is the amount of fat in pork so these two materials are going inside and this material in terms of fat is coming outside so if we have to calculate this amount 25 percent and 25 percent is present in 25 percent of fat is present in 100 kgs of the component that is coming outside so if we have to calculate this 25 divided by 100 multiplied by 100 100 will cancel out and this will be 25 so now i'm going to use these values 0.2 p 0.8 b and 25 in the component mass balance equation for fats let me scroll down so this is for fats i'm mentioning over here so that you understand that we are making this equation only for fats and not for water or protein so the material that is going inside again i'm going to write inflow is equal to outflow what is going inside 0.2 p is going inside 0.8 b is going inside and what is coming outside 25 so i'm going to write 0.2 p that is going inside and what else 0.8 b that is also going inside of the mixer and what is coming out of the mixer 25 so this is for fat okay so now if i want to solve it i can solve it by putting the value of b but what i'm going to do I'm going to convert this zero point. There are decimals in this equation, so I'm going to make it more simpler so that it is easier to solve. I will multiply both the sides by 10, and this equation will come out as 2p plus 8b is equal to 250. Since I multiplied both the equations with 10, okay, now I can easily calculate it. Now what I will do, I will put the value of B from this equation, B is equal to 100 minus P and I will put this in our component mass balance equation. Let's write 2P as it is. Now in place of B, I am going to write 100 minus P is equal to 250. This was from equation 1. Equation 1. Okay, so now let us solve it. If we calculate this in a calculator, I will get 91.66, which is kgs. Now what is P? P is the amount of pork that is going inside of the mixer. Okay, so if I have to calculate the amount of uh, back fat, I can easily do that using the first equation. Remember the first equation? This is our first equation, 100 minus P. So I will subtract P from 100, 100 minus P, and we will get 100 minus 91.66, which will be 8.34 kgs. 
So these are uh, the two quantities. P is equal to 91.66. This is the quantity of pork that is going inside the mixer and this is the quantity of back fat that is going inside the mixer. So now we have solved this question. This is the correct answer. The next question is how much weight reduction would result when a material is dried from 80% moisture to 50% moisture? Now it might seem that uh, they have not given the amount of uh, the product that is going inside or the amount of product that is coming outside. So we will have to assume that. Okay. So first of all, let me draw the block diagram over here. Now since in this uh, unit operation, drying is being done so I can mention the unit operation or the equipment as evaporator. I can mention this as either dryer or evaporator. I am going to mention evaporator over here. Now we know that uh, the initial moisture content was 80% so I am going to mention over here 80% moisture content and the final product after drying is 50% moisture content. Now these are the values that have been given in the question and we know that drying is being done and whenever drying is done, whenever a product is dried, some amount of water will be converted into vapors and those vapors will flow out of the evaporator. So we will also mark the outflow of vapors. We can mention the amount of vapors as capital V that is flowing outside. Now note that the amount of the feed is not given and the amount of uh, the product that is coming outside, the concentrated product is also not given. So we will have to assume the amount of product that is going inside of the evaporator. So let us say let the weight of feed is now I am assuming 100 kgs I am assuming the feed to be 100 kgs why I am doing so? because you see you can assume anything you want you can assume 894 or 595 but I'm going to use 100 100 because it will be easier for me to solve the equations it will be very simple okay you can also assume 1 kg you can also assume 10 kg I'm assuming the feed to be 100 kgs and you will see in a minute that why I chose uh, 100 kg to be specific now since uh, 100 kg of the feed is going inside and we have 80% of moisture so we can also calculate the amount of moisture we can convert this 80% into decimal form 80% of F F is feed and we convert that if we convert that 80 divided by 100 of will be replaced by multiplication sign and F as it is and we can write, uh, rewrite this as 0 0.8 F so this is the amount of moisture that is going inside now if you note that this 0.8 F, F, the value of F we have just assumed to be 100 kgs. So I can rewrite 0.8 multiplied by 100 and what will happen? It will be, if you multiply this in your calculator, it will be 80 kgs. Okay, so 80 kgs is the amount of moisture in 100 kgs of feed. 80 kg is the amount of moisture. Alright, so now we know the amount of moisture and uh, first of all what we'll do? We will write the total mass balance equation. Now the total mass balance equation again will be based on inflow and outflow. This is steady state because it has not been mentioned in the question explicitly that this is unsteady. So we are going to assume that this is steady state. Okay, so in steady state inflow is equal to outflow. Now what is going inside? The feed is going inside and two different materials first of all the vapor and this concentrated product let's mark this capital C this concentrated product is flowing outside this is going outside of the evaporator so inflow will be F is equal to V that is vapors and 
in addition C. Now this is the material balance or mass balance equation. F will be replaced by 100 because we assumed F phi to be 100. V will be as it is and C will be as it is. We can also rewrite this in terms of V and C like this 100 minus C. Now this is our first equation and I am going to use the value of V in the component mass balance equation. Now let us also write the component mass balance equation. Again the component mass balance equation will be based on the fact that whatever is going inside is coming outside. Inflow is equal to outflow. Now in this case the component that we are going to choose is moisture content. We are going to write the equation of component mass balance in terms of moisture. Now for this value we are going to calculate this as 50% of C because 50% of moisture content is present in the concentrated product that is flowing outside. So I am going to solve this 50 divided by 100 multiplied by C and this will be 0 0.5 C. And now we will write the material that is flowing inside and as we calculated the material that is flowing inside was 80% moisture content and 80% moisture content converted in simple form was 80 kg. So I am going to put 80 kg because 80 kg of moisture is flowing inside. So I will write 80 <clears throat> and outflow will be vapors. Vapors I will write that as it is and the concentrated product, the amount of concentrated product, what did we calculate? 0.5 C. So I am going to write in addition 0.5 C. Okay, now I can replace V from this equation, right? I can use the first equation and replace the value of V, 100 minus C plus 0.5 C. Now this is just simple algebra and I'm going to solve this quickly. And now after this calculation, the amount of C has been calculated as 40 kgs, all right? So this is the amount of the concentrated product that is flowing outside. We can also calculate the amount of uh, vapors from this equation. The amount of vapors from equation 1, we wrote the equation 1 as V is equal to 100 minus C and I am going to use that. 100 minus C, V is equal to 100 minus, now the value of C was 40 kgs, we just calculated that and now V is 60 kgs. Now note that we had assumed the amount to be 100 kgs and we cannot write uh, the amount here, the final answer in terms of kgs. Why? Because in terms of question, it was given that the weight reduction has been done and the moisture has been given. The 80% moisture uh, was initial and the final moisture content was 50%. And the amount, if you see in this question or observe in this question, the amount is not given. Anything is not given in kgs. So we will have to write the answer in terms of percentage only. Although you can uh, leave the answer over here and I believe the examiner may not deduct any marks, but to be on the safe side, you have to leave the answer in terms of percentage. So what will be the answer in terms of percentage? So we have to calculate percentage weight reduction Although they didn't ask about uh, the percentage explicitly, but I think you can leave this to have an edge over the other competitors or other batchmates. So percentage weight reduction is given as whatever is the initial uh, content minus final content divided by initial content. So the initial content that was flowing inside, we assume that to be 100 kgs, the final content the final content of what? The final content of the concentrated product. We are talking about the product. So final content was 40 divided by initial again that is 100. Now since this is percentage we have to multiply it by 100. Now 100 cancel out with 100 and this will be 60 percent. Also you can just write kgs in percentage but since I assumed 100 kg so it is easier for me to just write uh, percentage in replacement of kgs but if you have assumed something else if you maybe assume the amount of feed as 1 kg then you will have to convert that into percentage using this formula initial minus final divided by initial and that is 60 percent so this is the answer. 
Now in this question, uh, an evaporator has a rated evaporation capacity of 500 kg water per hour. Now a lot of students will just get uh, baffled at the fact that they don't know what is evaporation capacity. They will just get scared that what is this term we haven't heard of it ever and uh, they will just get confused. So you have to just relax and look at the data, look at the question, what it is asking and what it is presenting. So first of all, when it says that evaporator has rated evaporation capacity of 500 kg water per hour, that simply means that 500 kg of water is being evaporated in one hour. It is that simple. Calculate the rate of production of juice concentrate containing 45% solids, total solids, from raw juice containing 12% solids. So without drawing a block diagram, I can just uh, visualize, this, visualize this in my head that a raw juice is flowing inside, which is having 12% of solids. Flowing inside of what? Flowing inside of evaporator because that has been mentioned in the question. And uh, 500 kg of vapors or the water is flowing outside of the evaporator while evaporating. And finally, we get the juice concentrate out of the evaporator, which has 45% of total solids. Now I can visualize, the, uh, visualize this in my head because I have solved some questions already, but you may not be able to visualize this. So that's why we will draw a block diagram. Now let me mark this evaporator. Since the question has directly mentioned that this is an evaporator, and now uh, we know that something, a raw material, is going inside. Let's mark this capital F because this is our feed. And this is having 12% of solids. This is having 12% of solids because this has been mentioned in the question. Now some amount of uh, vapors or water is flowing outside because this is an evaporator and some amount of water will be flowing outside. And since I already mentioned about the capacity that is 500 kg water per hour, so we can write this as 500 kgs of vapor is flowing outside. And we can call this as vapor, capital V. And again, the concentrated product, we can call this as capital C. It has 45% of total solids. Okay, so all this data has been given in the question. I have just annotated the data. One important point, I have selected the basis for solving this question as one hour. So I have selected the basis as one hour. That means whatever is uh, whatever the material is flowing inside and whatever is flowing outside, that is all happening in one hour. The 500 kg of water that is flowing outside of the evaporator, that is flowing in one hour. Because that has also been mentioned in the question that 500 kg of water is flowing outside in one hour. So that's why I have chosen one hour as the basis of this question. If the question mentioned explicitly that 500 kg of water is flowing outside in two hours, so I might have chosen two hours as the basis for solving this question. This will come in handy at the last stage of solving this question. Now, first of all, let me write the total mass balance equation. Now the total mass balance equation is based on inflow is equal to outflow. So what is flowing inside? F the feed is flowing inside. So I will write F and what is flowing outside. So there are two entities that are flowing outside. The first is vapor and the second is the concentrated product. So I will write V plus C. So this is our total mass balance equation. Now I can replace V with 500 because 500 has been mentioned in the question. F is equal to 500 plus C. Now let us mark this equation number one. Now let us move on to make the component mass balance equation for solids. This is for solids. So for solids again inflow will be equal to outflow and uh, now see over here 12% solids are present and at the outlet 45% solids are present. Now I have to convert this 12% again once again. So 12% of 
F because 12% of solids are present in the field. That means 12% of F. And when I convert this, now you may have already guessed it. 0.12 F. So this is the amount of solid that is flowing inside. If we calculate over here, 45% of C because C is the amount that is flowing outside and 45% solids are present in C, capital C. So, so 45 divided by 100 multiplied by C and this will be given as 0.45 C, capital C. Now I have these values, I can use these values. Now notice, here's a twist, here's a twist in the question. The twist is we are making the component mass balance equation for solids, right? We are making this for solids. Now since we are making this component mass balance equation for solids, we can assume that V or we can just state for the fact that capital V is having solid content is equal to zero because these are vapors. This is just water. This is just water assuming that there is no solid particle uh, in the vapor, in the 500 kg of vapor that is flowing in one hour. The solid content in vapor is equal to zero because these are vapors. This is just moisture and there is no solid particle. So we can say that there is zero or zero kgs of solids in vapors. Now, Keeping this in mind, I will write the component mass balance equation as 0.12F, that is the inflow, is equal to. Now, what is the solid content for vapors? That is 0 plus 0.45C. Okay, so this is one equation. And if I further simplify it in terms of F and C, I can rewrite this as 0.45 divided by 0.12 capital C and if I use my calculator, I am uh, using my calculator right now, 0.45 divided by 0.12 is equal to 3.75. I was just using my scientific calculator, if you, if you have just, uh, if you just have a normal calculator, you can use that as well because this is just a simple division and scientific calculator is usually more uh, reliable for more complex calculations. Anyway, that's not the point of this video. So F is equal to 3.75C. This is, we can mark this as first equation or second equation because we already marked the first equation. Okay, now moving on. Now using equation one, using equation one, the equation one was F equal to 500 plus C. F is equal to 500 plus C. Now I can replace the value of F or C and put it in the second equation. Now I will put the value of F that is 3.75 C is equal to 500 plus C. Now I use this equation, this value of F and I have just put it in first equation. Now I will move the value, move C, capital C to left hand side and I will keep 500 on right hand side. This will be 2.75 capital C is equal to 500. If I move 2.75 now in the denominator, 2.75 and now I can calculate this again once again. I'm using my calculator right now because why not save some time? 2.75 divided by, okay 500 divided by 2.75 is, it's coming out as 181.81. Now this is our answer, although this is in kgs. And uh, what you can do, you can also calculate the value of F if you want, but that has not been asked, but I will just do it. Um, so the value of F, we can calculate this from this equation, equation number two, that is F is equal to 3.75 multiplied by capital C and F multiplied by 181.81 and this will come out as 681.81 kgs. Okay, so this is the amount of feed that is going inside and this is the amount of uh, concentrated product that is flowing outside. Now since we have been asked, we if you remember, we took the basis for this question as one hour. Okay, we, we were asked about uh, the evapor, we were asked about the rate of production 
pay close attention we were asked about the rate of production not just the amount of production and rate what is rate rate is amount divided by time so this is a general formula generalized formula for rate and we have been asked about the rate of production and the amount that is flowing outside is c is equal to 181.81 kg this is the amount 181.81 kgs and what is the time what what was the time that we took as a basis we took 1 hour as the basis so we are going to put 1 hour 1 hour and you may think that this is unnecessary because you could have just written per hour after kg in the answer directly because dividing it by 1 will be the same value this is this hasn't changed much but i just wanted to show you a step by step procedure on how you can actually use the formula and use the basis and then finally get the answer so so, so this is the rate of production 181.81 kg per hour so per hour because uh, we have been asked about rate in the question we have been asked about rate in the question so this was it for today Uh, let me know if you have any doubts i hope you found this valuable and uh, if you have not subscribed to the channel make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit the bell icon as well so that you don't miss the new videos when they come out i'll see you next time class dismissed